Hello folks and welcome back to Medieval Total War. I am Connor Step and this is going to be part 35 of my early campaign where I'm playing as the Danes. And we are getting close to the end of this campaign here. It is the year 1414 and at this point I've just been sort of looking for a fight. I am currently at war with three factions. I was attacked by the Poles, I believe two episodes ago. I don't intend to press the issue against them because they are insignificant. Um, I believe they attacked me just because I hold on to one of the provinces that they are required to get uh, for their glorious achievements. Let me double check that. And if I look at their homelands, and is Prussia on here? Prussia's not on here. But I hold other provinces of their, like, you know, Lithuania's on there. Um... And that's it. Yeah, I guess Lithuania is the only province that I hold that they would also be making uh, points off of. But yeah, that, you know, it, it didn't go well for them. So uh, that's that. The Mongols have been at war with me for this entire campaign, essentially, or as long as they've been on the map. Um, they are not a threat. They have not been a threat for a while. Currently, they are engaged in a civil war. Right now, the faction themselves only holds uh, Paraslavl, Trinagov, and then Crimea. They are also at war with the Turks. This is the Turkish reemergence, who is now holding Kiev. And the Turks are allied with the Poles as well. So, they are, even though they only have one province, they are in a somewhat comfortable position, I suppose. Maybe, maybe they can make something happen there. What's this unit? Sepahis of Port? It's a cool looking unit. And then I just started a war with the Egyptians in the last episode. Again, just looking for a fight. It did take me some time to clear out the waters uh, of their boats so that I could, you know, send a landing force to Constantinople. And I was able to take this province without a fight. And now I'm just sort of planning on sitting here and waiting for them to counterattack. I... The thing is, I, I didn't want to send any less than three stacks, just because, you know, that, that could really be sending my men to their deaths. Um, so I felt like three stacks was the minimum, just to be safe about it, you know, give my men a chance to actually fight and win. Uh, with that being said, though, if I were to attack and push them down Anatolia or push up into the Balkans uh, or, you know, you know, the Eastern European region, I feel like... Um, they would be retreating for a while, right? I, I feel like I would be pushing them down the Anatolian uh, landmass, and then I would end up in the desert before I would actually get a fight. And that's the not what I really want. I, I don't want to be fighting in the desert. My troops are not really designed for that sort of warfare. My chivalric knights themselves are just... They have heavy armor, you know? They don't want to be fighting in the desert. Same with my huskarls. They don't really want to be there as well. So, yeah, I want to kind of stay here in the arid land of Anatolia or the Balkans or whatever. Constantinople, Greece. This seems to be better. Hopefully they will counterattack. Currently they hold a lot of forces up here in Breidenberg and Franconia, so they would have to sort of thin out their border territories if they were willing to go to war with me. Otherwise they could attack me. That's an option as well. Saxony is a little bit exposed. If the Germans wanted to jump in as well, they seems like they're kind of aiming in that direction. So that's an option for the Germans if they wanted to attack Saxony. Let's look at their points objectives. Do they have... So Saxony is one of their homeland's objectives. Yeah. So... And Prussia is. Yeah. And Pomerania. Those are three provinces that I do hold. So they they could be justified to go to war with me. Uh, however, I think uh, the, also like Bohemia is also one of their objectives and that's held by the Egyptians. So it doesn't have to be me. You know, they could be attacking someone else if they wanted to. Let's see. I think the Egyptians have a new sultan. No, he's not. He's not new. He's, he's old. 54. Yeah, tons of influence. But he does have plenty of heirs. I remember checking that in the last episode. There's a few Egyptian boats in the water that are still left. I think it's just these two. 
So let's see if I can take them out. Uh, let me remind myself. So the Bogla has a speed of two. And then my longboat to the speed of three. So I should be able to catch. Let's see, and what are you? So two caravels. So catch the Bogla with my longboat. And then kill it with my caravels. And then what about down here? We have a Dao. Dao has a speed of three. So what do we got? A Carrick. A Carrick. Also has a speed of three. Okay, well, that that probably could be able to beat the Dao just by itself, right? And the Cog and the Caravel both have a speed of no. The Caravel has a speed of one. Wow, yeah, it's really slow. Yeah. Well, let's see if we can catch it with the Carrick and yeah, go from there. And that could be okay. All right, let's put you together. Now my. Uh, income is in the positive. That's nice. Making 570, you know, it's, it's something, right? I'm not losing too much. Uh, since Egypt owns such a huge, you know, portion of territories, I think that even after clearing out these Egyptian boats, I'm not going to be making a huge amount of income, right? Like, maybe I can get this over a thousand, but I don't think I'm hitting two thousand, three thousand. Um, you know, maybe, you know, but maybe not, right? I have to be prepared to have a pretty small income for the rest of this campaign, or as long as I'm, I'm at war with the Egyptians, we will see how this goes. Right? Uh, but there's, like I said, not a lot of turns left. This campaign ends in the year 1453, so there's not a ton of time left, and I'm sitting at 596,000 florins in the treasury, so there's, you know, I, I have plenty to give there, right? Yeah. So I'm not, I don't plan on being aggressive. I'm, I'm just going to hang out and see if uh, someone wants to attack me. And, uh, yeah, if I feel like this posi position becomes untenable at some point, I can't always retreat. Uh, but for now, yeah, come at me, bro. Like, let's see if I can get a fight here in Constantinople. I've already had two fights with my late game armies, and they've been fun. It's been fun fighting the Poles and the Egyptians with my late game armies. But uh, I want more, right? And for those of you who are still watching this campaign, you deserve more. <laughs> You know, it's been a, it's been a, it's been a long one. So I don't think there's much left for me to build. Honestly, I think that let's see, Saxony is a province that is being used or was being used to train chivalric knights, and currently there's really nothing else for me to upgrade here, right? Uh, Pomerania. You know, it's funny. I've, I've never trained any Pavis Arbalesters, which are as you know, hands down, like the best archer unit in the game, and I just kind of tacked up to guns and went went with that direction. Now, I do have a Master Boyar here in Pomerania. But I still have not trained any Pavis Arblessers, I don't think. You know, just in case, you know, I can I can build another Master Boyar here in Pomerania. Why not? I have the money. Lithuania is being used to train my pikemen, and I'm getting my last... Yeah, my Master Armor, so my plus four armor upgrades for them. And after that, they're going to be fine. There's nothing else for me to give them here. Uh, Livonia is all tacked up, I think. No, Livonia I was going to try to use to supplement my artillery from Finland as well, so... Let's get a Master Foundry. 16 years. Gosh, the campaign's gonna be over. Yeah, just takes so long. Novgrad, or Novgrad is also a, a pike production province, and there's nothing else for me to do here for them. Uh, Finland... You know, I was thinking, I... Don't know. So I'm almost positive that the armors do not give defense upgrades to boats. Right? Like for artillery, I would imagine they'd be giving uh, armor upgrades to the crew that are manning the artillery. But for boats, I don't think that the armors and the metalsmiths offer upgrades to those things. Um, let me look at my provinces here. Do I have any armors in any provinces that are building boats? Because I'm building boats in these provinces and I don't have any armors. Um, Denmark was building boats a long time ago. And so was Sweden or Norway. I can't quite remember. You know, like I, I have nothing else to do. So let's just build an armor. It only takes four years. And then let's see if I get a boat with like extra armor. Um... We know that the Carracks that I'm training here have armor of, or defense of, uh, three, right? 
So I, I again, I don't think that the armor gives uh, armor bonuses, but hey, let's just let's just find out. I'm 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 not doing anything else, right? Uh, so Eden is being used to train chivalric knights, and there's nothing left for me to build here that upgrades chivalric knights. Norway is being used for pikemen, and I think I'm all maxed out here as well. And then here. Yeah, Wessex is, it does give the plus one Valor bonus to Cogs, so I don't feel like I should get Carrix here, but Carrix having a speed of four is very, very nice. It actually is. And if I got a Master Foundry, that's 16 turns, and then 10 turns, that's 26 years. It's, yeah, that's no point. There's no point, yeah. That's going to take too long. Yeah, that's okay though. I'm getting master uh, master foundries built in all of these other provinces so that I can get nice artillery in those provinces. Yeah. So that's going to be okay. Other than that, I think everything else is good. Like I left my my situation I think was pretty good when I left it off in the the last episode. So I don't think there's any micromanaging that I have to do in regards to my armies. I think that I did a good job of pruning my excess here in Sweden, my reserves. And that actually helped out once I went to war with the Egyptians because it did help me save a bit of money, actually. So, yeah, that was a, that was a good thing that I did that. And is there anything I should upgrade? No, it's or not upgrade, but retrain. And I think it's looking okay. This is missing one man, but... Yeah, there's these assassins that are kind of running around, and sometimes they will pick off one of my men. Oh, it looks like I could retrain. Gosh, I, I'm thinking, like, <laughs> I, I'm getting uh, the controls for Rome Total War mixed up. I, I yeah, this is a... Ah, oh, there's no... It's just a catapult. There's no point in taking up a turn to... Yeah, just, just forget about it. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, just forget about it. Don't worry about it. Uh, this king is 44, and his brother, Prince Olaf, is 38. But then the king's son, Prince Canood, will be of age in five turns. And Prince Canood, once he has King Canood, he will be the faction's leader uh, when this campaign comes to a close. So it's going to be exciting to see what kind of man he becomes when he becomes of age. It would be nice, my king's influence is super high right now, and it would be nice if the son comes of age when the influence remains high, because I'm starting to come around on this. I think that the influence at the time of an heir coming uh, of age actually does influence that heir's stats. So hopefully the king's influence does avoid the wraparound bug until the uh, son comes of age. <laughs> That'd be really frustrating. It wouldn't, you know wouldn't matter that much but still we will cross our fingers i suppose okay i don't think there's anything else i think there's really like right it's just the two boats that i'm attacking and other than that other than that i have boats in all of my territories all my sea regions are looking good that's fine and then population loyalty is fine as well so let's drop a save and let's see if we can, uh, yeah, let's see if we get attacked by either the Egyptians or the Germans or the Poles or the Mongols. Anyone. Wow, that's crazy. The Egyptian Bagla in the Aegean. First it sunk my longboat, which wasn't a surprise, but then it sunk both of my caravels. Oh my goodness. That is so annoying. Wow. Oh, what do we have here? Unrest in Paraslavl. I feel like I've never... Have I never seen that? So that's a Mongolian loyalist rebellion picture. That's really cool. Yeah, I feel like I've never seen that before. Um, yeah, so there's a... Like I said, a Mongolian... Is that Mongolian? No, that's a Turkish rebellion. Loyalist rebellion. Against the Mongols in Paraslavl. I get it now. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm with it. I'm with it. And, uh, yeah, let's see if there's any... 
Any traits that matter? Anything? So plus one acumen, but he's a he's a general, so it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter. So the Loyalist Rebellion gets three <laughs> three mortars, Turkmen horse, two archers, an Aptha, and an Arquebusier. Uh they will probably get destroyed by this Mongol heavy cav. Yeah, nice try though. Man, losing the Aegean, man, that's that's so annoying. That it killed two of my caravels. Oh, that's so annoying. Okay. Well, I guess I just will have to send in a bunch of bunch of uh, bigger ships, right? So I have a cog here. Let's send hmm. I guess send you three boats. And can I send another caravel up here? And let's send this Carrick as well. Yeah, let's let's mess that thing up. Prince Canute has now come of age, so we will will be checking him out in a moment here. Looks like he's only a one-star general, so that's not a good sign. Although it could be better than that, we will see. Uh, pride, so yeah, minus, okay, so that's a bad one, yeah, minus two command, minus two acumen, plus three valor, so a good fighter, but yeah, not a good leader as a governor or as a general. And then killer instinct, even more valor, and then plus one dread. So altogether, that's plus five valor, I mean, he's just gonna be a monster on the battlefield. But I haven't used a king on the battlefield in a very long time, and look at that, two loyalty as well, so... Yeah, he's just going to be babysat by his dad. And, um, yeah, yeah, his influence wrapped, yep, the wraparound thingy happened where he's down to four. Yeah, that, that explains it. That explains why you suck. That's too bad. Two acumen. So, only one less acumen than his dad. But I think... Pride? Does pride get even worse over time? I can't remember. Yeah. Oh well. All I need him to be is alive, really. I don't need him to be uh, great at his job. And and that's it. There's not another son on the way. There's two princesses. But yeah, there's no younger brother for Prince Canude. At least not yet. But I, I guess it doesn't really matter. And I guess also it's time to look for... A wife for him, just just in case, you know, just to do our due diligence. Uh, let's see, yeah, there's some Italian princesses down here, so let me find my emissary. Where is he at? Okay, there you are, hanging out here down in Provence. So yeah, you're actually not too far away. Unfortunately, there's no port here in Provence. So you can't get there right away. Is there anyone else closer? Yeah, I guess not. So go talk to them. And if not them, is there any German princesses hanging about? Oh, I guess I'll look for them if I if I have to. I know there's a Polish one, but I don't think the Poles are going to be too willing to uh, let me marry their daughter, considering that... Yeah, there's one right there, and... Yeah, considering that we are at war, I don't think they will let me marry her, but... Let's see if the Italians say yes. There's also a Sicilian princess. She is an option as well. Although, I just, I really feel like the Sicilians have never said yes to me. That's just how I feel, though. Again, not super important, because I don't think that we're gonna need Prince Canude's heir to ever take the throne here in this campaign, but something... It's still something to, you know, just keep track of out of a protocol, essentially. It has been a few turns now since I have invaded and, and uh, conquered Constantinople, and there has been no repri uh, reprisal yet. Um, they have forces... They, they seem to be gathering forces that could counterattack. M maybe, you know, we will see. Um, yeah, I, I'm starting to think... It's interesting. They just brought this emissary here. Oh, I forgot to give the governorship of Constantinople to someone. <laughs> two, two command stars and four loyalty. Yeah, that's a, that's a very good one. Uh, yeah, should I give it to you? 
So I only have a three-star general. I think this is one of my uncles, I think. Three stars, five vacuumen. Yeah, he, he could actually make some money off Constantinople. How much money am I making here? Two, I'm making 2,000 off Constantinople. And I forgot to put uh, taxes up as well. I'm making almost three grand. And then if I give him the governorship, that's going to put him up to a five-star generals. And we're now making, uh, yeah, over 4,000. So that actually does help out the uh, income, making up to 3,000 or 600. Yeah, pretty good. But now the Egyptians did bring an emissary into this province to spy on my uh, my armies. And this is something that I've suspect suspected for some time. Actually, going back to my Shogun days, I was thinking that I think that um, the AI, despite like how we believe that the AI can see everything and that it does wait for our moves before it does, you know, make it move its moves. We do know that we move first in the uh, turn order, but I still think that the AI sort of wants intelligence before it attacks. I still think that it wants agents in, in, uh, regions before, you know, before it attacks. And this has sometimes led me to believe that, you know, if I'm being very diligent, and I'm killing agents that are in my border provinces all the time. It seems like maybe that does delay attacks a little bit because they are not getting very good intel on my provinces. Um, and then, you know, when I do, like, I don't have an assassin with me here, so I can't kill this emissary. I could bring one down, sure, but I kind of want to use this as an experiment because... It's been uh, eight turns now since I have invaded this province, and there's been no counterattack. This emissary just popped in here, I think, in the last turn, perhaps. So, if there's going to be a counterattack happening soon, I, I think it would be like, yeah, yeah, soon, right? Um, so that's just something I, I I can't prove that this is true. It's just been a suspicious a suspicion of mine. So let's keep an eye on that. Uh, as we move uh, further into this and yeah, there's still some yeah, they keep on popping out boats like they really are producing a lot of boats that I keep on destroying so another Bagla, yes, yes um, what do I have? I'm running out of boats myself so let's catch it with the longboat, kill it with the caravel and yeah, I should probably bring more boats up from here Bring some more cogs up because I am losing boats in the process. Yeah, that is for sure. And for you, what do we have? We have a cog, one star versus a two star Bagla. Hmm. I don't like my chances, but we will see if I can pull that off. And then, yeah, bring down a cog and a carrick here. Combine them and. I think, other than that, we're looking okay. And now my king has died from an illness, and he, he just died, I just checked his age. He died at the age of 54, that's interesting. Yeah, that's that's young, that's young, I you know. I, I know I know that I was wrong before when I thought that their um, minimum age to die of old age was 57, but yeah, 54 seems young, but... Luckily, Prince Canute is here to now be the king of uh, of of the realm. And what do we got here? Rebels in Genoa. Okie dokie. The Byzantines are happy. Master Foundry is finished here in Ireland. And yeah, the Sicilians are and the Italians have declined my marriage proposal. So that's unfortunate. I have a son on the way. I, is this my is this is this my new king's son or is this my dead king's son? I, I don't know. It's a little confusing, isn't it? Because my new king doesn't have a wife. So I feel like that would be my old king's son. Prince Christopher. So I'm assuming these three are going to be my old king's sons. Prince Valdemar, Prince Hardkunun, and Prince Christopher are going to be the, uh, the brothers of the current king who... Yeah, for influence, it's not good. It's not good, but... I can check in 
on uh, my general's loyalties. I do have a princess. I can marry her off to a general who, you know, if there's any disloyal generals, I can um, use that. And there's also a jihad on the way. Yeah, the Egyptians have sent a jihad. Some Gulam cavalry, some Muwahid foot soldiers, some Abyssinian guards, some Akbuziers, Arabian militia. Nothing too crazy, but you know, it is there. They also all have attack upgrades as well, which is pretty cool. And then, yeah, there's the Sultan's army here. There's some armies here down in Greece, a little banged up. And then there's armies here in Nicaea and uh, Trebizond. Ooh, they did bring in a third, well, yeah, third half stack. So this might be go time. Yeah, I, I would expect them to attack me uh, in the this end turn here. So that could be pretty fun to fight a, fight a battle. So I do have a handful of generals that only have three shields of loyalty, but I think that the main culprit here is this guy, Sir Eistein Skegjason. Uh, yeah, Skegjason. Well, he is a general here in Saxony, which I think is probably like my most uh, pivotal province on my de whole defense right now, considering that it is sandwiched in between the Egyptians and the Germans. Um, having the two loyalty generals not good, so let's marry... Yeah, he's not family. He's a unit, a, a um, unit of chivalric knights. So let's send Princess Astrid down here to marry to him, and we can assassinate this Egyptian emissary. See if there's any other agents. No, no, no. And then, since the Sicilians de declined my proposal, let's go back. Let's see if we can find any more options. Are there any more? Is there any German princesses? If not, I can go back to the Italians and see if they might change their mind. Oh, wow. The Egyptians have built a... Uh, what, what boat is this? A boom. Yeah, cool. Look at that. Wow, you don't see too many uh, high-tier boats for the AI. But here we go. Attack 4. Defensive 3. Speed of 2. So 4-3-2. Versus my cogs, which have a 4-2-2. Two, two. So the booms are better than my cogs. Interesting. Yeah, they have one higher defense. Now, I do have some cracks around, but not, not in this sea region. So I would basically... See, my cogs are faster than my caravels. And I have three caravels. They only have the one boom. Zero command. My cogs have two command, so let's see if they can catch them and kill them. And if not, I have three caravels of, as well who might get the job done. And then what do, what do we have down here? We have a Bagala, two stars, and then we have a, a cog, zero stars. Yeah, we'll see if we can get that done. And... Are there more, or is it just those two boats? It might just be those two boats. The Egyptians sure are building a lot of boats. Like, they are really trying. Yeah. All right. Sweet. Well, let's get ready for this fight here. Okay, so I did beat that boom in Adriatic. Uh, that feels good. And let's see, I sunk the Bagla in the Ionian Sea as well. And, yes, the Pope is asking for support against the Egyptians. Well, I can't crusade, so sorry, Pope, that's your fault, dude. And, yes, my assassin has been caught. Okay, I let my assassin get caught. It's my bad. Master Foundry is finished, so maybe I can get some good artillery pieces in North Umbria. Famine in Prussia. Okay, we'll have to check out their population loyalty. I'm sure they will be fine, though. And yeah, there's a German crusade going to Tripoli. So now the Germans are at war with the Egyptians. I don't think they were before. I think that they were uh, at, at a peace or a ceasefire or something. So that's interesting because they share a huge border in Europe itself. So um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see if how much conflict kind of erupts in that region. Um, and yes, so that two-star general did wed my daughter. So now... He should be up to, is it four or five? I can't quite remember how many loyalty shields that does give. Let's check in on my generals and see if there's anything. Let's see, highly educated does give command. Okay, that's that's a good one. 
This is a bad one. Inbred minus three command minus three acumen. Yeah, that's that's very that's bad. That's very bad. Uh, let's see, plus two acumen. That's good. And all right, that's fine. Oh, homelands. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah, fourteen twenty-five. So this is the last counting period before the end of the campaign. So yeah, scored eleven points. That does feel good. Sitting on 245, and the Egyptians are sitting at 191. Yep, looks good, feels good. Let's retrain this general. He is the guy. I, I forgot to do this. I should have retrained him. These are the units that did defend Prussia in the last episode, and I forgot to retrain them. Yeah, that's my bad. Luckily, the Egyptians did not attack. However, they also did not attack Constantinople. That's interesting. Like, guys, you, you have to. <laughs> you, you would think they they have the numbers, too, to at least make it a good fight, right? So, that's interesting that they not attack. The Jihad just sat for a turn. They, they can't do that. They can't, they can't sit. If they sit, they lose men. So, yeah, they, they have to attack me. You would think so, at least. And, yeah, the... German Crusade as well. Interesting. Wow. Now, I I don't think that's going to reach Constantinople. I mean, they have to back it up with some units. The Egyptians are under siege here in Croatia. By a really banged up German army. So you would think the Egyptians would be able to counterattack, but they don't really have the troops in Serbia or Hungary. Huh. Yeah, the Egyptians are just too spread out, aren't they? And I'm I'm not helping, of course. I have just have destroyed their navies and then cut their empire in half, so Yeah, they gotta go through me to fight the Germans. And the Germans have to go through me to fight the Egyptians. I will I can just let them pass though. I don't need them to How's this how's the uh, zeal here? Zero percent. Oh does that Huh. Does that mean that the crusade picks up none of my troops when it passes through? That can't mean that. Oh, that's very interesting. Oh, I wonder. I really wonder. Would I lose zero troops to the crusade if it passes through? Oh, that's so interesting. Yeah, I guess. I, I hope it reaches. I, I want to find out. But I, I don't see that crusade making it past either Bulgaria or Greece. It needs it needs backup. You know, it needs support. So, you know, I I don't I don't know. Are these armies going to go with it? Help out, perhaps? Do the Germans have boats that can reach? No, and they're not they're not allies, so they can't use my boats. If we were allies, they would be able to use my boats. I think to go to Tripoli, but. That is not an option for them, so... Yeah, I don't know. I don't really know what their plans are. Oh, man. The Egyptians are going in strong, but they are not attacking Constantinople. They're going right back into... Was it Pomerania or was it Prussia? I couldn't quite see. Uh, the Germans um, are going to retreat from Hungary with their crusade, because AI crusades can retreat, unlike human crusades. Yeah, here we go. Pomerania. So they do outnumber me by about a two to one. And yeah, they're bringing in a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven star general. I have an eight star general. So ha ha ha. Take that. <laughs> um, yeah, this, 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 this could be good. Their initial wave is going to have six pieces of artillery. So that's going to hurt them. And their catapult crews are a little bit beat up. I don't know if they will be able to fire, actually. Maybe they will. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to try to keep that in mind this time, because last time I did deploy a bit too too forward, and I was under attack uh, right away from their artillery pieces. Now, since I was retraining my organ guns crew, I brought in a serpentine as well, and I'm excited to kind of show off that artillery piece as well because it's a it's a long range piece and it's higher um higher re reload time so it might be kind of fun to use the organ gun and the serpentine together uh other than that though yeah they have the saracen infantry this is a very very good spear unit 
Muwahid foot soldiers are very good attacking spear units. Uh, javelins, two javelin units, two uh, arbluster units, and then a Gulam cavalry, so it's a good cav unit. And then, yeah, a fourth. So the general's going to be in a unit of Saracen infantry. Yeah, okay. Okay. And then as for reinforcements, um, yeah, so like Pavis Arblusters, uh, yeah, Mamluk Horse Archers, okay, uh, the rest of it's kind of just beat up, a lot of beat up stuff there. Yeah, some Abyssinian Guards, Arblusters, Handgunners, some Mamluk uh, Handgunners, it's a very bad unit, but um, yeah, it's... It's it's a lot of stuff. We we will see if we have to fight all of it. And it's also going to be key to see if we get good weather as well. Hopefully we can use our guns in this battle. I don't want to speak too soon, but it does look like we might be fighting in good weather. And yeah, I feel like I want to sort of back up, don't I? I, it's tempting to take this little ridge here, but then I do feel like I might be in the range of their artillery, but it does, it, it, it depends, right? It depends on where they're going to deploy, right? Like, if they're going to deploy right here, then yes, I will be in range, but, you know, if they deploy, like, you know, over here, then I, I might be okay, right? Yeah, it's kind of tough. It's hard to say. Like, this could also be a decent position to sort of take a, uh, a choke point between the two forests, and I could hide men in the forests. That's an option, it is. Hmm. Maybe take... taking this ridge here, and if they do have artillery, then just send my cavalry and, and wipe it out, right? And then I could potentially also hold or hide uh, units in this forest as well. Yeah, I, I kind of, I want to take the risk and I sort of want to see if I can have a high ground advantage. I did bring a couple of units of Viking Raider Cav just because these are the only units of Viking Cav that I had in this province. And uh, yeah, who would have thought that you'd be seeing a unit of Viking Raider Cav this late in the campaign? You know, it's pretty, pretty wild stuff. So let's get these units hidden in the forest, like that. And then let's get the general kind of worried. I don't I don't want him too close because, yeah, they, there might be some enemy artillery on the field. And yeah, I think so that's, that's that. Those guys are set up in there already. They're hidden. And we might be able to get some flanking attacks with them. And then... Yeah, I always forget which, um, which command it is for my, is it, is it this one? No, it must be, must be that. Okay, there we go. I always forget. Yep, and then sure enough, there's artillery right, right freaking there. So we have to get those boys. So we have to go on the attack. Yeah, that's, <laughs> oh dear. Okay, yeah. Let's take this artillery out. Let's go forward here and here. Let's get my serpentine to start shooting at that mangonel. It might be able to take it out. I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how it works as a uh, counter artillery piece. All right, so that's fine. That's fine, General. Let's get him like here ish, and then let's see. Are we getting counterattacked? So there's our blusters, Gulam Cav. So my chivalric knights should just wreck their Gulam cavalry. And that's one of the reasons why I feel confident going on the attack here. So my Arblusters are already shooting. That's interesting. Okay. And how about on this side? Yeah, keep them there, I suppose. And then on this side, uh, let's go there. And then, oops, yep, we're getting counter charged. Let's go there and let's go wreck those Gulam Cav. And then let's get my Viking Raider Cav to come take these artillery pieces out on that side. And you can skirmish back, please, and thank you. And, yep, Saracen Infantry. And we can fight here and here. That looks good. Yep, we wrecked those Gulam Cavalry. But now we have Muahids coming in, and they can uh, do a decent job against my Chivalric Knights. So let's get back. Let's try to intercept, maybe, with my Pikes, maybe. 
And let's go up here, intercept these Saracens. Let's get back to the Arcabouziers. And there we go. Alright, so how are we looking here? We should beat the Saracens there. And then Viking Raider Cav can go out. You can attack that unit of catapults, and you can attack that unit of catapults. Alright, there we go, there we go. And Saracens, and we couldn't catch the Moorhead Foot Soldiers, that's a shame. So, I mean, they'll still lose to my knights, I guess. Let's go here, and then here. And then Saracens, or my guns are supporting my chivalric foot knights. More Saracens coming in, hot damn, yeah, there's, there's a lot of them. And yeah, we're getting rid of the catapults and the javelins. And the Art Blusters, yep, that's all good. That feels very good, getting rid of those units. Now let's go here and take care of those Meganels. And... Yeah, guns are shooting. Serpentine, Organ Gun. Let's see, Serpentine, are you still shooting? Yeah, shoot at the Meganel, please. Or maybe the Art Blusters. And, yeah, you can go here. So we drove off those Saracen Infantry. You can... Uh, okay, so we got rid of those guys. That's good. King is safe. That's what's important. Uh, Pikes can get back here, I think, and you go here. And then Chivalric Knights can chase down Saracen Infantry here and then here. Alright, that feels good. So Viking Raider Cav are wrecking, wrecking shop in the back. That feels good. And do I have two units sitting around here? I thought I had two units of Viking Raider Cav. And we're still fighting in Saracens on this side. Looks like we will turn this around. And we are shooting into the flanks with this unit, I think. Can't fire in the rain. Is it raining right now? What's going on? These guys are shooting. You guys able to shoot? Go there, please. And, man, that freaking Mangonel. Can I get some uh, Viking Raider Cav to take on that Mangonel? My Viking Raider Cav. Are you guys losing to our blusters? Oh, okay, that's, that's fun. I, I, yeah, what happened to my other unit of Viking Raider Cav? They must have gotten lost. Let's see, are they down here somewhere? Yeah, they're both... Yeah, gosh, just lost both units of Viking Raider Cav. <laughs> oh, bad, bad unit, bad unit. Alright, well, let's get these Chivalric Knights. They can take out that Meganel, because that thing is just wrecking havoc. Oh my god. And that Trebuchet as well. Are you firing? Doesn't look like it's firing, if I'm being honest. Oh, yeah, it's firing. It's shooting. It's fully operational. And let's try to get these groups back here. You... Are you still fighting? No, okay, that's a general. That's why he's still fighting. Yeah, let's kill that freaking guy. You... Get back here. Get back here. Pikes, um... Turn around. And, yeah, you guys can chase, I suppose. Uh, Chivalric... So they have Mamluk Horse Archers coming on. But we just have to kill this general, really. Yeah, Pikes flank on in, go on engage at will, and kill that general. Kill that general! And yeah, it is starting to rain now, so that's gonna mean that our guns can no longer shoot. Oh yeah, yeah, that's that's unfortunate. I have three gun units that are still I ideally capable, right? And then Chivalric Knights. Yeah, they're bringing on camels. I don't want my knights fighting camels. I do not want my knights fighting camels. Um, but yeah, these are blusters. I really want to get rid of them. Damn. Alright, well, let's get back. Let's get back. Because, yeah, knights fighting camels. They have a really good bonus versus camels. And are we going to kill this general? There's still 24 left of it in, in his unit. God damn. Yeah, Pikes, um, try to kill, try to help out. Kill that Saracen Infantry. And then, yeah, let's just try to get back here. Yeah, Viking Viking Raider Calf. Holy moly, they just got wrecked. I mean, they, they did their job to an extent, but I kind of would have liked them to survive a bit longer into this battle. That's for sure. Uh, Javelin Man. There we go. He's running away. Finally. Holy moly. There's seven left in his unit. Let's see if we can cut him down. Like, um, Akibuziers. Yeah, you guys try to, try to help out. Do it we have whatever we can to kill him. And let's see, our blusters chasing chasing my chivalric knights? Is that really what you guys want to be doing with your uh, with your lives? I mean chivalric foot knights can reach you there. And my chivalric knights can hunt down these javelin men. What is my serpentine shooting at? Shoot at the but uh, Bedouin camels. Ooh, they're going right after my Oh no, don't go after my general. Don't do that. Go here, go here, and then yeah, serpentine, try to 
Try to catch this fucking guy. Oh god, this is gonna be nasty. If that unit catches my knights, that's bad. But I have to turn around and fight, don't I? Come on, Pikes, get him. Get him, Pikes. Oh, this is gonna be a bad fight. Pikes. Yeah, try to, try to break them fast. Try to break them fast. They get a huge bonus when they're fighting. Um. All right, Serpentine, go after the Mammal Course Archers. And then, yeah, we did break them fast. That's that's nice. And then Serpentine bounced. Uh, it got two of them. That's a nice shot. It's decent. So Trebuchet is still operational. Let's get it off. God dang. Ugh. Gross. Gross. Chivalric Knights, turn around and get this unit. Chivalric Knights, you guys are hunting Javelin Men. I guess that's worthy. And then, yeah, our, our Blusters, Trebuchet. They had some mortars as well, do they not? Yeah, I don't really know. I don't know. Yeah, Serpentine. Serpentine's picking them off, slowly. And I suppose I can... get some reinforcements on the... on the battle now. Alright, Chivalric Knight's gonna take down this trebuchet. Come on, get it boys, get it. And then, yeah, Peasant's coming on, not too worried about that. Bedouin camels. All right, let's try to get my guys in some semblance of a formation. So you go here, you go here. So my center got wrecked. Yeah, my center really fought hard. But they're still around and my general has not taken any casualties. Serpentine. Serpentine, you keep shooting at the Mammoth Course Archers. And then, yeah, knights come down to Um, where else? Is there any other artillery that needs to be... Um, killed. I'm not seeing any, so knights just come back here. Nubian spears, javelins, our blusters. Yeah, let's just get my... Get my two chivalric knights and let's get them back to that flank there. And hopefully it stops raining at some point because I would like to use... My artillery can still shoot. But my guns cannot, so I would like to be able to use my guns at some point in this battle. Peasants are now fighting my pikes, and chivalric footnotes go in there. And yeah, Mammoth Course Archers, they were thinking about charging in, but... Yeah, they're too afraid of my gun units. And yeah, we will... Man, it's crazy those peasants actually fought for that long. And then here we got some newbie and spears coming up, so we don't want them to catch my chivalric uh, knights. Then our blusters are coming up as well. And yeah, Serpentine, are you still shooting at the Mammoth Cross Archers? That's what I would like you to shoot at. Please and thank you. And then yeah, let's get my knights back like here. And then yeah, let's get my left flank back into position. And even though my guns can't shoot, I would still rather them ha be in front of my formation. Uh, just because they can sort of bait the enemy into charges. So, like, if it wants to go in here for some reason. Like, okay, I'll, I'll take this. Alright, yeah. Ooh, that, that, yeah, damn, I just got one of my own knights with my serpentine. Ooh, that sucked. Yeah, man, like chorus archers, you want to go in and charge me? Like, kind of okay with that, honestly. Let's get my chivalric knight, oh, not you, you go here. You go here. And my Serpentine is now out of ammunition, yeah. Alright. So let's withdraw that in an attempt to get more units on the field. We got some R blusters, that's good. So these R blusters can come up here and they can start putting fire down on these Mamluks that are being really annoying and just kinda of hanging out here. And then we have Nubians going around our flanks. Well, guess what? I have some Viking Huskarls. That have just come on from reinforcements and they are just made for eating spearmen. So let's get them on. And then, yeah, once these serpentine, serpentine crew are off the field, we can get some more units on. We have an organ gun, has not been used yet. So I kind of want to. I kind of want to move my lines around so that we can get the enemy to eventually at some point be in range of our organ gun right now it's kind of way in the back and I would yeah I'd prefer this to be a little bit different here so let's see Nubians yeah, that's fine and 
Mamluks are charging my arquebusiers. Let's put my pikes there just to support my Mamluks or support my arquebusiers. And yeah, our, our blessers wrecked the Nubians. That's fine. And then yeah, we have a we have a wave coming on here. So let's try to get my guys back in time. Here and then here. Yeah, my center just got really banged up. And my general can get back as well, probably like here-ish. And that's looking good. Alright, so let's get my Huskarls probably like more towards my center. This means my center's really banged up. And are these Mamluks going to run away or are these going to fight? Just keep fighting against Pikes? Yeah, it says they're winning easily. That's crazy. So I'm I might just lose all, all of this. Yeah, my Aku Bouziers are running away. Yeah, I thought Pikes would be able to beat light light um, horse archers, but I guess not. And now that they have the Gulams and the Muahid for soldiers in, yeah, yeah, they're not gonna do well. So our uh, our blessers get back, please, and then Viking Huskarls, please shore this up here. Yeah, hold this. Be be my van or my rear guard here, and try to stop this madness, stop them from running down my soldiers. So it looks like it has stopped raining, so that's good news. Let's get my chivalric foot knights in. Oh, that oh that would have been a great opportunity to shoot uh, shoot the gulams. Come on, can you guys stop running away, please? And shoot into the flanks of these gulams. That'd be a great shot. That'd be a great opportunity. Uh, our blessers keep getting back, please. And then oh, they went right around my oh, this is bad. Oh no. Are you charged there? And did we get a shot in? Yeah, I think we missed the shot. But I have to micro elsewhere. I have to get rid of these, these more hateful soldiers. Yeah, them fighting my horses is a really bad fight for me. But I just... my They went right around my Huskarls. Yep. Yep, bad, bad, bad. Alright. That sucks. And... Are, are we gonna win? Are we gonna beat this? Let's not... Let's not shoot my own guys. Let's get back here. So we were able to beat the Muahid foot soldiers. Yes, yes. Let's get pikes here. And let's see. Huskarls are fighting two units of Mamluks. Okay. Well, I got gun supporting and I have um, Arquebusiers. Let's bring them up as well. Or my Arblasters, should I say. My Huskarls are running away? What in the hell is going on? What? From, from two... I mean, I know Mamluk horse archers are a good unit, but like, goddamn, what the hell? That's crazy. All right, let's get some fire on these guys. Apparently, they're just elite world beaters. Yeah, let's try to get rid of them if we can. Let's look. Looks like they brought some Arblesters up as well. Um, yep, Shavark Knights. That, they actually picked a good time to charge impetuously because, um, yeah, I, I didn't tell them to charge there, but they did it, and I needed that. I needed them too, actually. So good, good job, guys. And now they're chasing into my lines here. Yeah, it's not a good feeling. Just six four, just six Mamluks just kind of causing havoc. That's always fun. All right, what do we have here? Some more more hate for soldiers, our blusters and archers. So that's a lot of like juicy stuff that I wish I could run my. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff. There's some Abyssinian guards though. That's the issue. That's defending all of those archers. So if I can get rid of those Abyssinian guards, then perhaps I can use my cavalry to run down those units. Let's get my knights back so they don't overchase. And then pikes can go here. So more heat foot soldiers. All right, so let's see. Get some shots in. Okay, so my house girls did rally. That's good. Um. Let's go. Pikes here, guns back, and then chivalric foot knights there, and then huskarls into the Nubians, and that should be okay, I think. And then can we get some shots of my? No, that's too risky. Uh, uh. That's so tempting. There, yeah. Let's, let's get see if we can get a shot there. That wool that halved them. That like halved them. Holy shit! The organ gun is so powerful. <laughs> it's so powerful. Alright, so are my Huskarls gonna beat Nubians? Like, come on. Come on, guys. And then, yeah, the more hateful soldiers should die. 
Uh, this is a banged up army. This is <laughs> this is not much. All right, can we get a charge in here? Uh, yes, we can. Yeah, there's nothing back here defending all of these range units. Yep, let's go, guys. And the general as well. The general has to go in as well and run these units down. Yeah, we gotta go. We gotta wrap these guys up and do some damage here. So, are we gonna kill handgunners? All right, so handgunners went into melee with my Huskarls. Okie dokie. So let's send my Chivalric for Knights to help out there. That looks good. And then, yeah, General can go after these Arblusters. Knights go after Arblusters. And then you go here. And there we go. Yeah, let's 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 get some units here. There's a lot of ranged stuff that needs killing. And are these handgunners just gonna keep fighting? God damn. Yeah, I, I swear sometimes it feels like the general so the enemy general didn't die in this battle, did he? Even though he fled, I don't think he died. And I feel like this army is fighting very bravely as if he is still on the battlefield. And that seems to be something that doesn't quite register in this game. Where, uh, yeah, like, the enemy general will, will flee and they still get this massive morale bonus. Um, if he's like a really good general, that is. We were able to do a lot of damage in that last little run down there. And, however, there's more reinforcements coming on. Armenian heavies, even though it's only half strength, is still a pretty good unit. What else do they have? Mamluk handgunners, Slav javelins, woodsmen, Mamluk horse archers. So not much. It's mostly just the Armenian heavies that I'm worried about. And my army is pretty banged up. I did get a unit of mounted sergeants as reinforcements so they can provide some good cavalry that can also run down units as, um, you know, as they break. Because my chivalric knights are getting pretty gosh darn tired and my infantry is getting pretty light. My arblesters, luckily, they still have a lot of ammunition and they're completely completely healthy throughout all of that, so that's all good. And my artillery piece, where where is it? It's still here. It's still here. It's still operational, so let's maybe bring back my center just a little bit. I I still have my seven Saxon Huskarls, or my Viking Huskarls, just, just because I, I mean, they, they're still, a, even seven of them are pretty good, you know? Maybe I should withdraw them, though. Same with these four Chivalric Foot Knights. But yeah, we're starting to get some fire onto these Armenian heavies now. My guns are shooting. Yeah, they're down to 17 men, so they've already lost five guys. Yeah, three units of guns are shooting at them, plus my Arblusters. And these Armenian heavies are not going to be long for the world. However, they do have some infantry coming in for support. And, I, th you know, I think this is the time. I think I have to withdraw these units. Yeah, withdraw the chivalric foot knights and the huskarls. I I just I need I need more more men on the field. Nice volley, holy moly! Yeah, nice. Using guns can be fun sometimes. It sure can be very rewarding to see a full volley go off and just watch a unit disappear. Now we have the javelins coming up. As well as some woodsmen and some mammoth horse uh, handgunners, that is. And uh, overall, not a very threatening little contingent. In fact, I probably could just send my two banged up units of chivalric knights and they could run down that entire group. In the center, what do we have? Pavis crossbows and some mammoth horse archers. So again, that's not too threatening. And I probably. Is that my handgunners? That's... Or my arquebusiers? That sounded very loud, man. Yeah, that wasn't my organ gun. They're not in range. And on this side, yeah, I, I probably should go hunting because Bavis crossbows and Mamluk horse archers, what do they have in the back? Akabuziers, crossbows, naphthas, woodsmen, peasants. Hmm, nothing too heavy, really. Nothing too heavy. And then here on this side, yeah, I think I just go for it. Knights go there, knights go there drive off these units and then on this side mamluk horse archers let's 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 wait a little bit let's maybe hmm i think they could outrun my mounted sergeants so let's bring back my mounted sergeants there's no reason to chase and get them um basically overextended i think so 
Let's do that. And then, yeah, Mamlacourt handgunners. They're, they're really not too threatening, honestly, so... I have to make sure I don't overextend here with my Chivalric Knights. And now Akabuzes are blasting into these Mamla Course Archers. And yeah, that, that feels good. Yeah, take, take some shots here. Sometimes the best way to get rid of Force Archers is just to shoot them. And if they're going to be in range of my guns, that's, that's helpful. So let's bring out some reinforcements. And what do we get? A unit of Chivalric Knights and a unit of Viking Landsmen? Okay, awesome. That's that's good. Some decent um, heavy infantry and some some decent heavy cav as well. What do we have? Some Gulam bodyguards coming right down the pike. Get a volley off on them. And the horse archers are being shot down. We have Naphthos coming as well. I can't let them throw grenades at me. So that's a little bit dicey here. I think I need to charge those Naphthos with my mounted sergeants. Basically, like, sacrifice if I have to. Because I can't let them bomb me. Yeah. Taking out two of them with a volley isn't enough. I need to really destroy this unit. So let's see. Pikes turn around. Chivalric dudes turn around. Uh, let's see, knights go in here, and then, what do we got, peasants, woodsmen. Yeah, let's support with my pikes here, and support with my chivalric sergeants here. And where's the naphthos? So we, there's nine of them, and my guys are fighting peasants, and these are all ranged units. Awesome, that's a good, that's a good break for us. So yeah, pikes fighting woodsmen, that should be fine. I think, maybe, actually, it says they're evenly matched. So let's turn my guns around to shoot into the flanks. And then we're fighting these Golan bodyguards here. That should be fine. And what do we have? Man, the corn ingot is just shooting into my chivalric knights. That's not good. So let's just go here, run them down. And we have more knights and Viking landsmen coming on. That's awesome. Uh, organ gun crew, you can get back on your gun. I think it's, I think it's actually right in here. So yeah, I suppose you can wait. That's fine. And yeah, let's get our guys back here and. You guys can come back here, and then the gun unit, yeah, you are going back to your organ gun. Alright, that looks good. And then on this side, yeah, we broke that entire pocket. Are those naphthas gone? Where are they? Eight, there's still eight naphthas left. They have pretty good armor, I think, so like... They, they can actually hold up pretty well. Ooh, chivalric foot knights, do not overextend. Turn around, please. And then have my chivalric mounted knights chase down the crossbows. Alright, these Nathas think that they're still in the fight, eh? Well, let's turn my chivalric knights around and make sure that we get these guys. Yeah, they realize right away that they've made a mistake. Let's make sure these Nathas are, are good and gone forever. We don't want them coming back at all. And, ooh, my chivalric knights are going to get charged by... Gulam Cavalry. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's not great. My guns are going to provide... I have my new Chivalric Knights that have just come on. It's weird that the soundtrack has just come on as well. That's like, usually never happens. Mounted Sergeants, you guys are chasing. Man, the Chorus Archers. Oh, that's not good. No, you're just going to chase them forever. Yeah, that's so wild that the soundtrack came on. I just pressed pause for a little while so I could, like, go use the restroom and then, uh... I can't come back and the soundtrack's on. That's so bizarre. Let's turn around my units here so that we can get shots at these Mamla Course Archers that are just trolling us from behind. And... Gosh, I, I'm like so distracted by the soundtrack. I mean, I'm so used to like never he hearing it during a battle. Um, yeah, you guys go run and chase down the Arquebusiers. And Chivalric our Foot Knights can get back. There we go, there we go, we drove off those Gulam Cavalry, and what do we have here? Desert Archers and Hand Gunners. Well, 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 let's... Let's go down here and get those units. And then, yeah, my beat-up Chivalric Knights can go back and rest. And, yeah, my guns and my... Arbalesters were able to make those 
Man, the course art just run away. There we go. So far, I'm still only seeing light units coming onto the field, so I'm just going to keep picking them off as they come on. I have this fully fresh unit of chivalric knights that are right here. We can go pick off these previous crops, uh, crossbows. Yeah, running down Akabuzies on this side. Uh, mounted sergeants. Um, I kind of want to try to catch these horse archers if I can. And can we... Can we get these guys? Yeah, they're going to run away. Yeah. Yeah, they're just too fast for me. What else do they have coming on? Bedouin, camel, warriors. Okay, I should get back then. Yep, I do not want to fight Bedouin camel warriors with my cavalry. That is for gosh darn sure. But I do want to get rid of this unit of crossbows. Ooh, is it going to be too tight? Uh, it's going to be very tempting. I do want to get rid of that unit if I can, though. And as the camels emerge from the woods, nope, I'm not sticking around for that. So, man, these crossbows, see, like the morale of these units are in is insane. So let's get back and get away. So we, yeah, we, they, they died to the last man, Jesus. Yeah, let's get away from those camels. Let's let our guns shoot them or something, or, let our pikes or chivalric foot knights or anything, anything but but at my uh, my chivalric knights. Oh, can we get an organ gun shot on these camels? Oh, that would be so, so cool. <laughs> oh, get closer. Just come on in. Come on in, camels. Yep, taking some pot shots from my guns. And... Organ gun still has shots left. Actually, has, has a lot of ammo left. There we go. Let's get a shot in. Come on, get it, get it, no, oh. oh, no, <laughs> there's out of rain, no, they weren't turned the right direction, so they weren't able to get a shot in, um, yeah, Arquebusier is get, get up the hill a little bit, so you don't shoot your own dudes, and no, come back, come back, let my organ shoot, well, at least my guns are shooting, right, so, yeah, we're picking off these Bedouin Camel Warriors, and if they want to charge into my pikes, I got pikes right here. Just don't want them to get into my mounted sergeants. That's a fight that I do not want. And what do we have here? Woodsmen and arquebusiers, Mamluk horse archers, Mamluk horse archers, Mamluk cavalry. Okay, so that's a decent unit of medium cav that use axes and therefore they have a bonus versus armor. Uh, don't, don't really want them to fight my my chivalric knights either because they're just going to trade upwards into them so yeah that's going to be a little bit tricky i'm going to have to lead with my infantry against that unit but let's clear out these woodsmen they also have a bonus versus armor but they're just they're so crappy that if you get a charge in on them with your cavalry like they're not going to stand up long enough to really do much damage back they work better as a flanking unit uh that way you don't have a morale shock of just losing so many guys in one um, one charge. But yeah, let's see if my Arquebusiers can break the morale of this unit here. Yeah, there they are. Just, just as I say it. There they go. They're running off. And now we're getting shots in on these Arquebusiers as well. So they're trading fire a little bit. Are these guys able to shoot? No, they're out of ammo. Okay, so let's withdraw those Arquebusiers. And then, yeah, of course, they're out of range of my of my organ gun. Oh, come on. Come on, let my organ gun feast. Let it feast. Come closer. Come closer. No, no, this way. This way, up the hill. God damn it. Oh, all right, fine. Pikes, uh, you guys have to turn around and face off. And then, yep, guns get back. Chivalric. Dudes and landsmen go in, and pikes can go in as well, and uh, the mounted charges can help break these. Yeah, let's just charge into the rear of the Mamluk uh, cavalry, and maybe that'll be a better fight for us. Yeah, just drive them off like that. 
And then the Bedouin camels are running away as well. And there we go. All right, pikes get back. So Ghazi infantry, yeah, these are very dangerous units actually. Yeah, can we shoot the Ghazi infantry? Can Oregon gun shoot something? Please, please. Yes, yes, go towards the Oregon gun. Yes, yes, I, can't, I don't even watch it. I don't want to watch anything else. I just want to watch this. Shoot this. Yes, yeah. All right. Yeah, Ghazi infantry. No, King, do not, or General, do not do that. These guys have axes. They're very dangerous. Um. Yeah, I don't really have a good unit for facing off against those guys. I just kind of want to... My Archibuziers are out of ammo, so let's throw them in, actually. Yeah, it's not a great fight, but it's it's whatever. And then on this side, let's send these guys back and these guys back. Mounted Sergeants are fighting Mamluks. Yeah, that's not a good fight. Well, let's try to support them if we can. Yeah, let's try to support them. I might lose my Mounted Sergeants. I do have pikes here that are also fighting the Mamluks, so maybe we will be okay. And then the Ghazis got broken by my three pikes and my Arquebusiers. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. And then these Arquebusiers, they should get run down by these Chivalric Knights. And what else do we have? Crossbows, Pavis Arblusters, Woodsmen, Mamluk Horse Archers. Okay. And my infantry has gotten into the fight, so now we are supporting against these Mamluk Cavalry. Yeah, so we should be able to drag them down eventually. And then on this side, yeah, Archibuziers were <laughs> my Archibuziers are just charging into the lines and just like driving these units off. It's kind of hilarious. Um, let's see here. Let's get sh these Chivalric Knights to help out against these Mammoth Horse Archers. And then, yeah, you guys can shoot there. Chivalric Knights can run down. Yeah, Archibuziers, Gazis, that looks good. Pikes. Let's let's withdraw those three pike men. They've just <laughs> they've done their jobs, and then Archibuziers are charging into crossbows. Wow, what a what a weird fight. But hey, if it just drives them away and keeps them from shooting at me, that's fine. Fine with me. And yeah, horse archers are retreating, and let's see, Mamluks. Okay, so that's good. That's good. We drove them off. That looks good. All right, let's get my general back. Do you guys still have ammo? You do still have ammo. All right. What is next for the Egyptians? Well, I'm seeing some peasants and not much else. So I'm curious to see if this is going to be the end of the Egyptians or if they're going to be willing to send in more units. I do believe they have more units if they wanted to send them in, but they, they might be ready to call it. We will, we will see soon. And the Egyptians are coming out for another attack. Man, oh man, wow, all right. Well, luckily I do have some reinforcements coming on. My pikes are gonna be here soon and I need them because my center, my center is very, very weak, yeah. So let's send pikes up there. And then I also have another unit of uh, our blusters as well. So that's gonna be useful. We're driving off this next wave. What do we got, what do we got coming on? Arquebusiers, all right, nothing too scary, crossbows. More Mamluk Horse Archers. Yeah, a ton of those units. Very annoying. Uh, it is raining again, but I don't think I have many guns left that have ammo, actually. Um, you have ammo. And then you... Ooh, you should have been withdrawn. Okay, let's withdraw these guys. And then Mamluks are shoot shooting... Am I organ gun? Ooh, that's mean. Don't do that. Uh, yeah... Our blusters, shoot down the Mamluks, please. And then, yeah, working gun. I mean, the rain will diminish their shots. I guess shooting. Yeah, working gun, just get back here. Can you get back here, please? And they want to charge in. Okay, okay, okay. Let's get Viking landsmen here. And guns can start shooting. And are you guys almost in range? In range, come on, get a get a volley. Can you guys get a volley? Let's go here. And oh, I kind of want them to charge my organ gun just so I can blast them in the face. Just a little bit closer, guys. Just a little bit closer. Okay, well that's happening. Let's check in on this. So we have woodsmen, crossbows, 
some urban militia, crossbows, woodsmen, arquebusiers. All right, so they got some bodies coming on, but nothing too scary. Gulam bodyguards, that's a good unit. More heat for soldiers, that's a good unit. So, uh, and some more naphthas in the back, okay. I don't think naphthas can work in the rain, though. I don't think so. So my Arblessers are tearing down those Mamluk horse archers slowly, but eventually. And then, yeah, my left flank is just so, so weak. Ugh, yay, yay. Um, let's see. Can my Chivalric Knights run down all of this? Yes, except for the Urbans are going to provide a little bit of a bite. Uh, Gulam Bodyguards are going to come in. All right, so let's send it. Ooh, 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 here we go. Here we go. Organ gun. Shoot down the Gulams. Shoot down the Gulams. Shoot! No! Stop running away! Oh no! no. <laughs> they were trying to run away and they were like, not having it. Alright, send the pikes in. It looks like they just destroyed my organ gun. So let's go here. Let's go here. Let's flank the Gulam bodyguards with my landsmen. And yeah, my Arquebusiers are now out of ammo. This guy wants to keep chasing. Let's get rid of him. Alright, peasants coming in. Yeah, my left flank is going to be overwhelmed here. But, let's see, you guys chase here, and then let's go with my chivalric knights, can get ready to charge in. Yeah, woodsmen, I mean, my chivalric knights are going to be able to, I think, handle that left flank, I think. And the course, I just want to recharge my landsmen here, so let's charge here, go on bodyguards. Still fighting, uh, let's see, arquebusiers can probably be sent in, honestly, maybe, I'll, I'll think about it. How are we doing on this side? Urban Militia are fighting my pikes? Pikes? Okay. So let's get a recharge here and then here. And let's try to break these woodsmen. And then we can go after all of those guys there. Urban Militia fighting pikes. Um, let's try to support that with my general. Not a great fight, but it's something. And then I kind of want to just bring my arquebusiers up and use their swords in battle in hand-to-hand -hand combat. To fight these Mwahids. And yeah, we're driving off the urban militia. On this side, we're driving off those arquebusiers. And then, yeah, now we can break this entire flank. This little sector. All they have left is... Yeah, skirmishers. So we should be able to break all of that. Let's bring back my chivalric foot knights. This... Unit... This little... Gula, is it Gulam Cav? No, it's more hate for soldiers. Yeah, they're, they're still fighting well. So let's charge in there. Bring in the landsmen as well. And let's recharge with my chivalric foot knights here. And then, let's go charge there, and most sergeants, you, you just hang back. You hang back, and stay fresh. You come up here and charge in. And let's try to get rid of as many of these crossbows, and previous crossbows, and uh, all of his ranged units. Let's, let's, let's get rid of as many of them as we can. Oh man, more units coming on in. Mamluk horse archers, Mamluk cavalry. All right, well, I, 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 okay. As I was saying before, I don't really want to use my chivalric knights to kill Mamluk cavalry because they will trade upwards into that unit. But I, I just, I'm a little bit far away from my infantry support, and they can catch me if they want to. And, and they might want to, yeah. I think they they know it's a good fight for them. So let's turn around and fight here. Let's try to rear charge in. And if we can just break them, it might end up being okay. Yeah, I'm losing guys. I'm losing guys. You have to hurry. You're exhausted. No. Yeah. It, I mean, we can beat them, but it's just a, it's a bad fight for us. So, yeah, these guys are totally exhausted as well. Come on, get in here. Get in here, get these Mamluks, get them. And you as well, you can turn around. Yeah, these units are fighting so, so well. They're fighting so hard. It really does feel like they still are benefiting from the uh, their general's leadership, even though he is no longer on the field. But hey, you know, it's just giving me more of an opportunity to kill more, more of their soldiers. What do they have in the back? More arbalesters? Okay, not too worried about that. And we were able to clean up those Mamluks. So now let's get uh, here and let's go after these horse archers. 
And if they're gonna run away, that's fine. Then we can just go after these Arblusters and these Puffy's Crossbows. Ay ay ay! More heat foot soldiers, no! Oh, are they running away? They might be done, okay. Uh, I don't want to call it too soon. Shit. Oh, I, might have, I may have called it too soon. Yeah, I have to get my guys back. I don't, I can't be losing this many units of chivalric knights. I can't make that mistake. So let's get them back to my own lines, and... It's tempting to call it, but yeah, see, then they just come out. So yeah, they're, they're still ready to fight. These peasants and these mamluk... <laughs> God, they're such so shitty units. Oh, dear. So I think the only way for me to get rid of these Mamluk horse archers, since I can't catch them with anything that I have, is I have to bring up these units of Arblusters and start shooting into these Mamluks so they can start taking some volleys there. And yeah, I don't think these Mamluks or peasants are going to really cause much of an issue. Um, I probably could send these mounted sergeants over to pick off those Mamluk handgunners. And in the meantime, yeah, I mean, the Mamluk horse archers are going to do too much damage to my chivalric knights. They have a lot of armor. And these Arblusters will be able to cut them to pieces over time. There we go. And that's going to be the battle. All right, so a pretty bloody one. And I did capture over a thousand of their soldiers. Um, hmm... Do I want to, to execute them? I, I kind of do. I kind of I'm kind of in the mood for executing a thousand soldiers. So yeah, we killed three thousand, we lost seven hundred, and we did pretty well, I think. Yeah, it went okay. Yeah, it's too bad that we can't see how many kills the organ gun got. I sent it off right at the very end, I sent it off, so I probably could have kept it on, but I didn't know how long this battle was gonna go on for, so there we go. Got another battle in. Inquisition here in uh, Milan. Okie dokie. Okie dokie. We're catching German assassins in Scotland. I don't know what, what's what's with assassins going to Scotland in this campaign. It's weird. Uh, the Pope still wants to be an ally. I've just been saying no to him this entire time just because I just thought that maybe I would some at some point attack Sicily. Um, so let's just keep saying no to him. Why not? Uh, Lord Hrafsness and no mercy. Yeah, plus two dread, minus one morale. Okay, that's that's not good. That really sucks. I, I feel like, goddamn, okay. So, plus two dread. So he is famous for the massacre of thousands of prisoners in a single battle. Few can match the horror of this deed. And then no mercy. He shows no mercy and has killed many prisoners, but it po but is possibly too eager to do so, which deprives his men of their share of the ransom. So that's what happens when you kill all of the prisoners too many times. Now, considering that this man has only done that twice now, I didn't think that was going to be too many times. So that's unfortunate. It's weird that he got both of these traits in the same time. Because I thought that these were like a chain of traits. But I think that this is like... I think you get one of these if it if you massacre over a certain number of prisoners. In this case, maybe it was a thousand was the was the number. So in in any case, that does suck. Uh, minus one morale for all of the troops in this army is is a is a big blow. Considering that this is the province that has been attacked by the Egyptians twice, I might have to consider moving a different general to this province. He's still an eight star general though. That's that's still good, but. That's something that I will have to consider. But you know what? That is all going to have to wait until next time. As always, I hope you have enjoyed this one. And thank you very much for watching. This has been Kindness Sip playing Medieval Total War. Thank you very much. And goodbye.